Assalamu alaikum. This is our 34th lecture of managerial economics and the topic that we are discussing these days is pricing practice. In our previous lecture, we have discussed one of these models, that is uh, the actual pricing practices that are used by the firm. In uh, discussing, uh, while we were discussing our market structures, that is the four market structures, perfect competition, imperfect competition, monopoly and oligopoly, we have seen that the, in order to maximize profit, firm uses the rule that is it uh, equates its marginal revenue to marginal cost, except for the perfect competition where th there is an added restriction that is it also has to equate its price to marginal cost and marginal revenue. Because the reason is that the perfect, under perfect competition, the, the firm is price taker, whereas in all the three other uh, uh, market structures, that is monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly, the firm have some uh, market power. So uh, there we have seen that the marginal revenue is equated to marginal cost. Now, uh, we have discussed a pricing practice that is so far in, under those market structures, we have assumed that the firm is selling a single product, it is selling in a single market, and also we have assumed that the firm is a centralized single entity. We have also made a strong assumption that the firm has a perfect knowledge of its demand and cost relations. But in the real world, we know that the firms are producing more than single product, and they are selling in more than one market. Also. They, have, uh, they are not centralized entities, uh, especially the large corporate firms. We, uh, we can see that they are divided into different decentralized uh, units. And also the strong assumption about the knowledge of the firm, about its cost relations and its demand relations. Uh, we can say that in general, the firm has a general concept or general idea or general knowledge about the their demand curves and cost curves, and they don't have a precise, specific idea about their demand curves and cost curves. So in order to uh, include all these uh, cases, all these possibilities, we have to expand our simple rule of profit maximization, which was initially that the firm has to equate its marginal revenue to its marginal cost. Actually, we have discussed one of these pricing practices which the firm actually practiced, and that was the model of price discrimination in our previous lecture, where we have defined price discrimination, we have defined different types of, uh, um, different types of price discrimination that we, uh, that is, we have explained the degree of price discrimination, that is first degree, second degree, third degree, and similarly, we have also given the conditions under which this model can be exercised. As far as the third degree uh, price discrimination is concerned, we have seen uh, and we have explained it, which is uh, most frequently used. We have explained it with the help of a, uh, an example, both algebraically and graphically. At the end of the lecture, we have also mentioned international price discrimination. As I said earlier, that price discrimination as such where the firm is charging different prices from different segment of the society or in different markets, it has no negative connotation. But as far as the international price discrimination is concerned, that is when the firm is charging different prices or that is uh, lower prices in the foreign markets and higher prices in the domestic market, in that case, it has a negative con uh, connotation. The reason is that the foreign producers, that, that is if we are considering the textiles industry, then in that case, if our textile sector is charging lower prices in the foreign market, they will consider it uh, injurious to their domestic industry. Unka khayal hai ki is tarah se jo unki domestic industry hai, unko unfair competition ka saamna karna padta hai, kyunki hamari prices as compared to their prices are much lower. So they consider those products which are exported uh, to their countries, they consider them uh, dumped products. This is called dumping. Kaha jata hai. So, in the uh, international organizations, hai, trade, ki da, jase GATT or WTO, hai, to us, uh, uske liye, is problem ke liye unhone different jo hai, um, agreements or anti dumping agreement or ADD anti dumping duties. So, in this case, the importing country is allowed to levy 
an anti-dumping duty on the exporting country. तो इस तरह से लेकिन जैसे मैंने आपको बताया था कि ये प्रोसीजर जो है बहुत लेंथी है और बहुत कॉस्टली है एंड फॉर अ डेवलपिंग कंट्री लाइक पाकिस्तान एंड अदर डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज इट बिकम्स सॉर्ट ऑफ यू कैन से दैट बेसिकली इट इज द पर्पज ऑफ दिस एंटी डम्पिंग ड्यूटीज और एंटी डम्पिंग जो भी एग्रीमेंट्स हैं उनका पर्पज ये है कि फेयर कॉम्पिटिशन हो इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में लेकिन uh, का बाज दफ़ा ऐसा होता है कि डंपिंग के जो एलिगेशन हैं वो इतने सही नहीं होते और इस तरह से फेयर कॉम्पिटिशन के बजाय एज फेयर एज कंट्रीज लाइक पाकिस्तान आर कंसर्न दे हैव टू फेस एन अनफेयर कॉम्पिटिशन इन दैट रिस्पेक्ट सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द प्राइस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू इन अदर मॉडल विच इज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट मार्केट मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट मॉडल एंड देन वी हैव टू कंसिडर इन अदर मॉडल दैट इज jointly produced uh, product model so first uh, we will consider the multiple product model as i said earlier that uh, in the real world or uh, jo modern firms hain wo zaruri nahi ki ek product uh, jo hai bana rahe hon it's quite uh, common that firms are producing more than one product assuming that the firm is producing two products say a and b तो जैसे कि मैंने कहा कि बहुत सी फर्म्स हैं जो कि एक प्रोडक्ट के बजाय दो प्रोडक्ट बना रही हैं जैसे कि आप एग्जांपल हम यहाँ पे कंसीडर कर सकते हैं जनरल मोटर्स जो दो टाइप्स की कार्स जो है प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं ओल्ड्स मोबील है और उनकी दूसरी कार जो है वो शेवलेट है इसी तरह पाकिस्तान में इंडस मोटर कंपनी इट इज़ प्रोड्यूसिंग विद कलेब्रेशन ऑफ अ जैपनीज कंपनी इट इज़ प्रोड्यूसिंग टू टाइप्स ऑफ कार्स दैट इज़ ट्योटा ट्योटा एंड कोरे कोरे इज़ अ स्मॉल कार एंड ट्योटा इज ए बिग कार बट दे आर गुड सब्सटीट्यूट टू ईच अदर वेन अ फर्म इज प्रोड्यूसिंग टू और मोर प्रोडक्ट्स द प्रोडक्ट्स आर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर इन वन ऑफ दीज थ्री वेज दैट इज आइर दे आर सब्सटीट्यूट दे आर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स और दे आर न्यूट्रल प्रोडक्ट्स सो द प्रोडक्ट्स आर रिलेटेड इन टू वेज दैट इज आइर दे आर रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट्स और दे आर नॉट रिलेटेड प्रोडक्ट्स वेन दे आर रिलेटेड दे आर सब्सटीट्यूट्स और कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स जब वो रिलेटेड नहीं है तो वो फिर न्यूट्रल प्रोडक्ट्स होंगी तो इसमें हम जो कंसिडर करेंगे वो हम uh, एक फर्म जो है वो दो प्रोडक्ट्स प्रोड्यूस कर रही है जैसे मैंने कहा कि दो कार्स अगर प्रोड्यूस कर रही है एक स्मॉल कार है एक लार्ज कार है लेकिन वो दोनों एक दूसरे के सब्सटीट्यूट्स हैं लेकिन इसके बरक्स अगर हम देखते हैं कि उनके डिफरेंट ऑप्शन जो हैं जो उनके पार्ट्स हैं जैसे कि कोरे के जो पार्ट्स हैं और जो टोटा के पार्ट्स हैं वो उनके कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री गुड्स हैं Uh, the firm has to consider the interrelationship that is the demand interrelationship of these products because the price uh, of one product that is the change in price of one product brings about a change in the demand for uh, not only for the product itself but the other product too if it is a substitute and if it is a complement agar hum jaise dekhein ki agar kore ki price jo hai wo down ho jati hai kam ho jati hai to isse kya hoga ki uski sale zyada ho jayegi अगर कोरे की सेल ज़्यादा होगी तो टोटा की जो है वो रिड्यूस हो जाएगी तो इंडस मोटर कंपनी ये दोनों प्रोडक्ट्स जो है वो प्रोड्यूस कर रही है और ये दोनों सब्सटीट्यूट्स हैं इफ द प्राइस ऑफ कोरे इज डिक्रीज देन द सेल ऑफ कोरे इज इंक्रीज वेयर वो इंक्रीज हो जाएगी वाइल द सेल फॉर द टोटा विल बी रिड्यूस्ड सो दिस मीन्स दैट दीज टू प्रोडक्ट्स आर बिकॉज दीज टू प्रोडक्ट्स आर सब्सटीट्यूट्स Uh, on the other hand the sale of if the sale of uh, kore is increased the sale of its parts will also increase that is the, the sale of the parts will also be stimulated because uh, iski sale zyada hui hai to zahir hai jo usme parts use ho rahe hain jaise air condition hai cng kit hai ya gear box hai unki jo hai sale wo bhi zyada ho jayegi so this means that we uh, when a firm is producing more than a single product that is let's say it is producing two products and there are complementary products then it has to consider the interrelationship the demand interrelationship between the two products so iske liye hum dekh sakte hain ki jo ye demand interrelationship hai that is the effect of the demand interrelationship that comes into the uh, product the pricing and the output decisions of the product through the effect on margin revenues which you can see on your screen here you can see that there are two equations in the upper equation the margin revenue of product a is given which is uh, delta t r a by delta q a 
plus delta T R P by delta Q A. And similarly, the marginal revenue from product B is also given as uh, delta T R B by delta Q B plus delta T R A by delta Q B. So we can see that there are two components of the marginal revenue of each product. Look at the right hand side of the equation, you will see that the first component is the direct relation that is the direct marginal revenue because there we can see there we can see the change in the total revenue of product A with respect to its own uh, quantity that is QA. Look at the second component that is the second term on the right hand side of the equation which is delta TRB by delta QA that is the total revenue of the other product uh, with respect to the sale of an additional unit of QA. That is the total revenue of B with respect to the change in total revenue of uh, product B with respect to a uh, sale of an additional unit of product A. Similarly, for the second equation, you can see that there we have explained in uh, mathematically we are saying that uh, marginal revenue of product B is equal to delta TRB that is the change in total revenue of product B with respect to sale of product B itself okay plus the change in a revenue of product A with respect to an additional sale of product B. So the firm has to consider these interrelations the, the second term in both of these equations the second term on the right hand side of the equations presents these demand interrelationships. So in order to determine an optimal uh, output and pricing level, the firm has to consider these uh, demand interrelationships. The firm has to consider the, these demand interrelationships because we have already explained that when the price of one product changes, it not only changes the total revenue obtained from that product, but also from the uh, other product, which could be a substitute or a complementary product. So, is tarah se, agar firm jo hai, wo isko uh, nazar nahi rakhegi in uh, jo demand interrelations hai, agar wo inko ignore kar kar apni jo price or uh, pricing decisions or output decisions agar firm legi, to is tarah se sub-optimal pricing jo hai, uh, decisions jo hai, or uh, jo output decisions hai, wo aa jayenge. To firm jo hai, in that case, firm will not be able to determine an optimal uh, output and pricing decision. Because we have explained that if I have said that if the price of 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 the price the, uh, these demand interrelationships. The demand interrelationships on the right side of the equations, you might notice that if the sign of these uh, demand interrelationships is positive, that would indicate that the two, uh, uh, that the two products are complementary. If the sale of Kore is increased, then the, its complementary uh, goods, which are its parts, that is different options, CNG kit, hai, gearbox, hai, ya aur jitne bhi iske tools hain unki bhi sale pehle ke nisbat badh jayegi so in that case we'll have a positive uh, algebraic sign for the demand interrelationships but if the two products are substitutes as we have said that kore and toyota are substitutes in that case uh, the sign of these demand interrelationship will be negative so the firm has to consider uh, while uh, practicing it that is in the real world when the firm is determining its optimal level of output and pricing, it has to consider, it has to take into consideration these demand interrelationships. When the firm decides to produce more than one product, that is let's say two products or maybe K products, the, one of the reason uh, uh, is that it wants to utilize its capacity uh, at a fuller scale. If a firm is producing a single product and uh, it, can, it has a, a huge deal or a great deal of uh, uh, idle capacity, then it can use its capacity, it can use the uh, capacity or fully utilization. Uh, full utilization of capacity will require the firm that to produce another product or maybe 
uh, more than two products. So if uh, we assume that the firm is producing, let's say, K products, as you can see on the screen, then in that case, the firm will be optimizing its uh, profit by using this rule that if the products are A, B, C, and up to K, that is, uh, then it should produce at the level of output where MRA is equal to MRP and this is equal to MRK, that is the kth product, and it should be equal to MC. Having said that, that the firm will enhance its capacity utilization. This does not mean that now the firm will be uh, utilizing its capacity by 100%. No, it's not necessary. It's quite possible that when the firm was producing a single product, its uh, capacity utilization was, uh, let's say, 70%. But uh, if and now it decides to introduce another product, let's say product B, then its capacity utilization may be increased to 80%. So we are not saying that it will be uh, enhancing or it will be utilizing its capacity now by 100%. So this, this, in other words, means that the, uh, but its capacity, uh, nonetheless, it will increase. So it means that for optimal uh, pricing and uh, output decisions, the firm uses this rule that you can see on screen, that is MRA equal to MRP, and this is equal to the last uh, product which is produced by the firm in order of their profitability. So this means that product A is the most profitable product, product, product B is uh, lower than product A as far as profit is concerned, and the last product produced by the firm, that is the kth product, that is the least profitable firm. So the firm has to equate the marginal revenues of all the products in order of their profitability. This, in other words, means that we are saying that the product, uh, the marginal revenue of the least profitable product should be equal to the marginal cost of the firm. How to determine the pricing and the level of output which will maximize the more profitable products, that is explained by this equation. And uh, for that purpose, the firm will, in, uh, the firm will be using the mar marginal revenue of the least product profit. Uh, the least uh, pr profit producing, that is the least uh, profitable a product which in this case is the kth product. Agar ek firm jo hai wo three products in, uh, launch kar rahi hai. In that case, the products are represented by A, B, C, and uh, the firm has to equate the least profitable, uh, the marginal revenue of the least profitable product, that is MRC, to the marginal cost. This can be explained with the help of a diagram which you can see on your screen. In this diagram, you can see that the firm is producing three products, A, B, and C. And as far as their demand relations and their marginal revenues are concerned, they are independent. They are drawn here. The demand relations are given as DA, DB, and DC. And the marginal revenues, their corresponding marginal revenues are presented by the curve MRA, MRP, and MRC. The marginal cost of producing all these products is, you can see that is the marginal cost is drawn here. And uh, here you can see that the firm will be maximizing its output and it will determine the profit maximizing level of prices by using the equation that we have just explained. Here you can see that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal revenue of the least profitable product, in this case product C, at point EC. And you can also see the equal marginal line, that is EMR, which is crossing the marginal revenues of product A and product B, product C, at points EA, EB, and EC. Actually, here you can see that on the horizontal axis, you can see that the total number of units produced of all these three products is 330 units. Of this, we can clearly see that at point EA, we draw a vertical line and uh, that touches the horizontal axis and the demand uh, for A, product A. Or yaan se hum dek sakte hain ki for the profit maximizing level or the optimal level of output that the firm will be producing of product A, that is 60 units. And the price can be seen or the price can be, uh, you can check on the demand curve for product A. Or here we can see that if the firm is producing 60 units of product A, 
it will be producing 60 units of product A at a price of $16 per unit. Now coming to the second case, we can see here that the firm is producing the second product is product B. Here you can see that if you look at the horizontal axis, so 150 units are produced when we look at product B. But of this, 150 of these 150 units, 60 units we have said that product A is produced. So 150 minus 60 is 90 units. This means the firm is producing 90 units of product B. So, the uh, product B is 90 units which are uh, produced at the price, uh, price we can check kar sakte hai, iske jo demand curve hai, that is DB and here we can see that uh, the price uh, is determined as $15 per unit for product B. Now, look at product C. We can see the horizontal distance between EB and EA determines the output the units of output of product B. Similarly, we can find the number of units produced of product C by looking at the horizontal distance EC minus EB, which is 330 minus 150 and that is equal to 180 units at a price of $14 per unit. So, you might notice here that successively the demand curves become more and more elastic for uh, different products. Jesse hum dekhte hain ke यहाँ पे जो most profitable product है that is A, then the uh, next one is B and the least profitable product is C. So इनके जो demand curve है वो successively ज़्यादा elastic है, which in other words means that firm will charge lower and lower prices. As you can see from the diagram, for product A the price is sixteen dollars, for product B the price is fifteen dollars, and for product C the price is fourteen dollars. In this case, the demand curve will be more elastic, so the firm will charge a price to the price. And as a result, also if we look at the marginal cost curve, the shape of the marginal cost curve, we'll see that uh, if we compare the marginal cost uh, that is incurred on product A, it is lower than as compared to product B. And in this way, if we compare the marginal cost which is incurred on product B and product C, the marginal cost yahan pe, jo, it is higher for product C, which in other words means that the cost is increasing while the price or the average revenue is decreasing. Uh, and this implies that the profit per unit is declining. So the profit per unit is declining and uh, the rule here is that the firm can introduce new products or a variety of uh, the existing products as long as the marginal revenues of these products are greater than or exceeds their marginal cost, the firm can increase its, pro its profit. So, is tarah se hum yahan pe dekh sakte hain ki firm jo hai that is producing more than uh, a single product, here three products in this case A, B, C and we have determined the optimal output levels and prices determined for different products. Now, next we are going to uh, consider an other pricing practice model that is jointly produced products. When the products are jointly produced, that means that uh, uh, it's not only the demand interrelationship, but also the pro production interrelationships that the firm has to consider. These production interrelationships, they are arises because uh, the firm is producing two products jointly. As far as uh, this joint uh, production is concerned, that is the joint, uh, produ jointly produced products are concerned, they are, here we have to consider two different uh, uh, contexts, that is either the firm is producing these products uh, with a fixed proportion or it is producing with a variable production, a variable proportion. For the fixed proportion, when the firm is pr producing these joint products with a fixed uh, proportion, that is uh, in a ratio of 1 to 1. The classic example that is given for this purpose is uh, uh, cattle raising. And the products which are produced are beef and hides. When a farm is an agricultural farm and its farm is raised and cattle are raised, when an animal is sacrificed, then the production is 1 to 1. That is the beef that is produced by one animal and one height. Obviously, uski two heights nahi ho sakti. So, in that case, uh, 
the production is uh, in a ratio of 1 to 1. Whereas for the variable proportion, uh, we can uh, take the example of refining of uh, petroleum uh, products. So, in this case, the products that uh, come uh, uh, fuel uh, different types of fuels, like heating oils, hai, gasoline, hai, or uh, furnace oil, or diesel uh, fuel. Hai. So, in the firm, with variable proportions ke saath, within a specific range, the firm can vary the uh, proportion. That is, uh, that is why it is called that the firm are, is producing, jointly producing products but with a variable proportion. But when we consider um, a firm which is producing, jointly producing products with a fixed proportion, so the scenario jo hai, wo different. Ho as far as the cost is concerned, here the, that is very important. With the, when the firm is producing joint products with a variable proportion, then in that case, let's say firm is producing two products, that is A and B. In that case, the firm has to equate MRA to MR, MCA and uh, MRB to MCB. Just like normally, we said a single product ke liye ka tha ki that firm has to equate its marginal revenue to its marginal cost. Similarly, here the firm will be uh, equating its marginal revenue to its marginal cost. Only the difference, the only difference here is that the firm is producing uh, two uh, joint products with variable proportion. So, usme firm ko uh, wahi rule use karna hai, that is MRA is equal to MCA and uh, it has to equate MRB to MCB. And in that case, because uh, why the, the reason is that we can calculate uh, cost to individual products. We can allocate kar sakte hai, cost to uh, individual products. Ki, uh, to isme, uh, especially we can, we can, this means that we, uh, the firm is able to calculate its marginal cost for product A and product B separately. So that uh, it can easily equate marginal revenue of one product to its cost and marginal revenue of the other product to its uh, cost respectively. Uh, in this case too, when we are saying that uh, marginal cost is easy to calculate, the firm can easily calculate the marginal cost of the uh, uh, two or more products, uh, sometimes it is not possible to allocate average cost because there are some costs which are common to all products. But we are not going into those details. But we have just told you that the marginal revenue and marginal cost Product A ka usko firm equate karegi in order to determine an optimal level of output and then pricing. Uh, and similarly, it will equate the marginal revenue of the other product with its uh, marginal cost. Now, coming to the jointly produced products with fixed proportion, uh, we have taken the example of cattle raising. In that case, uh, this is, uh, it's not possible to allocate individual cost to two products. For example, uh, in the case of cattle raising, the products uh, that are produced are beef and hide. So we cannot say that the when animal, जो हमने यहाँ पे cost है, animal को feed करना है, तो उस cost को हम ये इस तरह से allocate किसी तरह से भी rationally नहीं कर सकते कि ये cost जो है, वो हम allocate कर रहे हैं beef को और ये cost जो है, वो हम allocate कर रहे हैं hides को. So it's not uh, rationally, it's not possible to allocate cost to different individual products in this case. Uh, because, so there is no economic reasoning by, by using that um, uh, we, can, we cannot allocate or we cannot separate the cost of uh, that was uh, incurred on beef and the cost that was incurred on heights. Because this is a case of jointly, produ uh, jointly pr uh, produced products where uh, that are produced with a ratio of one to one. If a fixed proportion ke saath uh, ye dono uh, produce ho rahe hain aur yahan pe inki jo cost jo beef par aayi thi ya jo cost jo heights pe aayi thi wo unko hum separate nahi kar sakte. There is no rational way in which we can separate the cost to these two products. So that their marginal cost curve will be uh, the same. That is their cost curve is common. As far as the demand relations are concerned, we can see that uh, specifically in this example uh, and maybe in other examples, we might notice that their demand relations, that is their demand curves and uh, their uh, corresponding marginal revenue curves, they are independent of each other. 
जैसे कि आप जानते हैं बीफ बेसिकली इज़ अ फूड आइटम एंड इट इज़ यूज बाय कंज्यूमर्स एंड इट इज़ आल्सो यूज बाय कमर्शियल जो आपके रेस्टोरेंट्स हैं या होटल्स हैं वहाँ पे ये यूज़ होता है लेकिन हाइट्स जो हैं उनके भी कमर्शियल uh, जो है यूजेस हैं द हाइट्स आर यूज इन प्रोड्यूसिंग प्योर लेदर जैकेट्स शूज एंड बैग्स एट्सट्रा so the demand for uh, hides and the demand for beef is independent of each other they have no relation as such jabki jo cost to incur hoti hai jaise maine pehle kaha cost jo hai wo common hai we cannot as allocate different uh, you know we we cannot allocate cost different cost to these two products that is we cannot separate these costs because these costs are not identifiable once the animal is sacrificed then obviously the cost on uh, uh, refrigeration for beef or the uh, cost that is incurred uh, in cleaning dyeing and tanning those hides that those costs are identifiable but yahan pe hum jo baat kar rahe hain jointly produced products ki hai aur jab wo products jo hain wo produce ho jate hain in the form of beef and in the form of a hide अप टू दैट स्टेज देयर कॉस्ट कैन नॉट बी सेपरेटेड तो इसलिए उनका जो मार्जिन कॉस्ट कर्व है दैट विल बी अ कॉमन कॉस्ट कर्व ऑन द अदर हैंड एज आई एक्सप्लेन अर्लियर देयर डिमांड्स एंड देयर मार्जिन रेवेन्यूज रिस्पेक्टिवली आर इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ ईच अदर तो नेक्स्ट आप देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पर इसको एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए हमने ग्राफिकली इसको एक्सप्लेन करते हैं और यहाँ पे हम देखेंगे कि फिक्स प्रपोर्शन के साथ प्रोडक्ट्स जो हैं वो प्रोड्यूस की जाती हैं तो इसके लिए हम डायग्राम देख सकते हैं यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन दैट वी हैव टू पैनल्स दैट इज लेफ्ट पैनल एंड राइट पैनल इफ़ यू लुक एट द लेफ्ट पैनल यू विल नोटिस दैट एज वी हैव सेट दैट द कॉस्ट कर्व इज कॉमन टू बोथ ऑफ दीज प्रोडक्ट्स एंड एज फर एज दॉरिजोंटल एक्सेस ऑफ द डायग्राम ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दीज डायग्राम इज कंसर्न इट इज मेजरिंग इट मेजर्स ऑल थ्री क्वान्टिटीज दैट इज the cattle that is being raised and uh, beef and also hides so ye sari jo quantities hain wo hum measure kar rahe hain on x axis that is the horizontal axis and uh, on the vertical axis we are measuring the cost and the marginal revenues so if we look at the diagram we can see look at the left panel here we have the independent demand curves of product a and product b assuming that we are considering here again this example of cattle raising where we have seen that the products are produced in a fixed proportion of 1 to 1 their demand curves are presented separately independently of each other da db and uh, their corresponding marginal revenues are presented as mra and mrb and their marginal cost which is common here you can see that the marginal cost intersects the marginal revenue curve which is the total marginal revenue curve and it is presented by mrt how do we get this total marginal revenue curve we get it by the vertical summation of the two marginal revenue curves of the two products that is mra plus mrb and we get this total marginal revenue curve the intersection of mrt with mc determines the optimal output level and here we can see that the optimal level of output activity jo hai that is when q is equal to 40 that is when 40 cattle are raised then you can see here that at this uh, output level what will be the price of product a and what will be the price of product b uh, this can be seen from their respective demand curves here the price of product a is 12 dollars per unit where as the price of the product b is 5 dollars per unit assuming that product a is beef and product b is hides so yahan pe humne dekha ki jahan pe marginal revenue total marginal revenue is intersecting the marginal cost curve there uh, we can see that this is considered to be the profit maximizing level of output and in this case this means that 40 animals are sacrificed and their beef the product of beef it's priced as 12 dollars per unit per kg or per pound lekin jo hides ki price hai that is uh, determined as uske jo demand curve db se hum dekh sakte hain that its price is 5 dollars per unit against this output
Now, this output is as far as this left panel is concerned. Here we can see that the marginal revenue of both A and B is positive. So that that's why we are saying the uh, marginal revenue has two no products that that is product uh, that is positive. Therefore, the firm will produce um, this level of output. That is, it will raise uh, cattle. There, the number of cattle is forty. Now, look at the right panel. Is me, when we see what is the basic difference between the two panels between these two diagrams? That is, the left panel and the right panel. You might notice here that as far as the demand curves. The, their corresponding marginal revenues and the total marginal revenue is concerned, they are identical. The only difference is the shape of the and the position of the location of the marginal cost curve. In case of left panel, we can see that the marginal cost curve is much higher, and in case of the right panel, the marginal cost curve, which is denoted by MC prime, uh, that is lower than the. Uh, marginal cost curve of the left panel, which in other words means cost you have pehle se kam ho gayi hai. Obviously, when cost is reduced, the firm will produce more. So, this means that cattle raising jo hai, wo ab pehle ke nisbat cheap ho gayi hai. So, wo zyada cattle jo hai, wo raise kar sakenge. And in this case, if you look at the right hand panel, you will see that now the number of uh, cattle that are being raised is 60 units. And because the total marginal revenue curve intersecting the MC prime, the new marginal cost curve MC prime, it is intersecting it at the level when Q is equal to 60. That is, 60 cattle are being raised. So this means that uh, product A, that is the price of B, that can be seen from D A, which is now ten dollars per unit. और जब हम यहाँ पे देखते हैं D B को तो वहाँ पे जो corresponding price जो है product B की that is 4.5 dollars per unit. But when we look at the marginal revenues, you will see, you will notice here that the marginal revenue of product B is negative beyond the level of 45 units. When Q is equal to 45, at that point the marginal revenue curve of product B is intersecting. The horizontal axis, which means that at that level of output, marginal revenue of B is zero, and beyond that level, it will be negative. So obviously, 60 jo hai, that is greater than 45. So agar 60 cattle raise ho rahe hain aur unko ham sacrifice jo hai farm kar rahi hai, to uska jo beef hai aur uski jo hides hain, 60 uh, cattle jo jo 60 jo cows hain ya goats hain unka uh, beef or mutton jo hai, wo market mein wo lekar aayenge at the price of ten dollars per kg, but ya per uh, pound aap keh sakte hain. To yahan pe, uh, lekin jo hides hai, unki jo marginal revenue hai, that is equal to zero uh, when uh, Q is equal to forty five. This means ki agar iske uh, beyond firm jo hai, wo hides ko sell karegi, it will be earning only negative marginal revenue for product B. In order to avoid this negative marginal revenue, pro revenue from product B, what will firm do? Normally, ye hai ki firm will uh, hold back the uh, production, that is, those remaining 15 units. Q is equal to 60, jo hai, uh, wo, uh, product, uh, cattle raising cattle, jo hai, itne wo sacrifice and aur uska beef jo hai, wo market mein lekar aayenge. Lekin, hides jo hai, wo only 45 jo unke units hai, usko they will offer it for sale in the market. The remaining 15 will be held back, that is, they are not offered for sale. Either they are destroyed or unko matab dispose of kiya jata hai, ya unko hold back kar lete hai. So, uh, iske liye aur bhi examples aap le sakte hai. For instance, uh, jo canning uh, industry hai, um, uh, pineapples ki usme, uh, by slicing the pineapples and peeling, peeling them and then slicing them, juice is produced. In that case, juice can be considered as a byproduct of canning industry. That is, jo pe sliced pineapple ki industry hai, usme juice jo produce ho hai by peeling the uh, pineapples and then slicing those pineapples. This juice is a byproduct. So, is byproduct ki jo quantity thi wo itni zada hoti thi ki uska marginal revenue uh, jo tha wo negative ho jata tha, aur isko avoid karne ke liye jo um, canning uh, industries hain, wo juice jo tha, usko destroy kar de de de. 
तो इस तरह से यहाँ पे हमने जो ये एग्जाम्पल है उसमें एक्सप्लेन किया है कि जो फिक्स प्रोपोर्शन में दैट इज द जॉइंटली प्रोड्यूस प्रोडक्ट विद अ फिक्स प्रोपोर्शन वेन देयर इज नो एक्सेस क्वान्टिटी ऑफ द बाई प्रोडक्ट एंड वेन देयर इज एन एक्सेस क्वान्टिटी ऑफ अ बाई प्रोडक्ट इसको अब हम नेक्स्ट एक्सप्लेन करेंगे विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एल्जैब्रिक एग्जाम्पल एल्जैब्रिकली अब अब इसको एक्सप्लेन करेंगे वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन दिस मॉडल दैट इज मॉडल ऑफ जॉइंटली प्रोड्यूसिंग प्रोडक्ट विद फिक्स प्रोपोर्शन दैट इज इन द प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ वन टू वन वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इट विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल एंड इन दिस केस द एग्जाम्पल दैट वी आर गोइंग टू कंसिडर इज दैट वी आर कंसिडरिंग अ पेपर कंपनी विच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग न्यूज प्रिंट्स एंड इट इज ऑल्सो प्रोड्यूसिंग पैकेजिंग मटीरियल और इनके जो डिमेंट रिलेशन हैं वो आप स्क्रीन पर देख सकते हैं हेयर प्रोडक्ट ए न्यूज प्रिंट इज लेबल्ड एज प्रोडक्ट ए एंड पैकेजिंग मटीरियल इज लेबल्ड एज प्रोडक्ट पी न्यूज प्रिंट का जो डिमांड फंक्शन है पी ए इज गिवन एज फोर हंड्रेड माइनस पॉइंट जीरो वन क्यू ए वाइल द इट्स कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग मार्जिन रेवेन्यू इज कैलकुलेटेड एज फोर हंड्रेड माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू क्यू ए द डिमांड फंक्शन फॉर द पैकेजिंग मटीरियल इज गिवन एज थ्री फिफ्टी माइनस जीरो पॉइंट पॉइंट जीरो वन फाइव क्यू बी और इसका जो कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग मार्जिन रेवेन्यू कर्व है दैट इज एम आर बी इज इक्वल टू थ्री फिफ्टी माइनस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री क्यू बी हेयर द फर्म इज प्रोड्यूसिंग दीज टू प्रोडक्ट्स इन अ वन टू वन रेशन दैट इट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग वन टन ऑफ न्यूज पेपर जो न्यूज पेपर है उसका अगर वन टन ये प्रोड्यूस कर रही है तो इसके कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग जो दूसरी प्रोडक्ट है वो भी वन टन ही प्रोड्यूस कर रही है दैट इज द अदर प्रोडक्ट विच इज लेबल्ड एज प्रोडक्ट पी एंड इट इज द पैकेजिंग मटीरियल तो यहाँ पे अब हमने जैसे कि डायग्राम में आपको बताया है वी हैव एक्सप्लेन दैट द फर्म हैज टू इक्वेट इट्स टोटल मार्जिन रेवेन्यू विद इट मार्जिन कॉस्ट सो इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द टोटल मार्जिन रेवेन्यू कर्व वी विल फाइंड द टोटल मार्जिन रेवेन्यू बाय बाई टेकिंग द वर्टिकल समेशन यहाँ पे आप देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पर कि हमने टोटल मार्जिन रेवेन्यू कर्व जो है दैट इज इक्वल टू टी आर ए प्लस टी आर बी एंड ऑब्वियसली टी आर ए इज इक्वल टू प्राइस ऑफ ए मल्टीप्लाइड बाई क्वान्टिटी ऑफ ए प्लस प्राइस ऑफ बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई क्वान्टिटी ऑफ बी तो इस तरह से जब हम मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे तो टोटल रेवेन्यू विच इज ऑप्टेंड हेयर दैट इज यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन हेयर वी हैव सब्सटीट्यूटेड क्यू फॉर क्यू ए एंड क्यू बी बिकॉज वी आर सेंग दैट वन यूनिट ऑफ क्यू इज इक्वल टू जहाँ पे हम जो जॉइंट प्रोडक्ट्स की मिसाल रह रहे हैं हमने ये कहा कि देर इज अ वन टू वन देर इज अ रेशियो ऑफ वन टू वन वन टन ऑफ न्यूज प्रिंट एंड इट इज ऑल्सो प्रोड्यूसिंग वन टन ऑफ पैकेजिंग मटीरियल सो क्यू इज इक्वल टू क्यू ए प्लस क्यू बी वन यूनिट ऑफ क्यू इज इक्वल टू क्यू ए प्लस क्यू बी सो इन दिस मीन्स दैट वी कैन सब्सटीट्यूट क्यू फॉर बोथ क्यू ए एंड क्यू बी एंड एज अ रिजल्ट वी गेट द टोटल रेवेन्यू ऑफ द टू प्रोडक्ट्स विच यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन now what will be the next step the next step is that we find the marginal revenue from this total revenue curve that we have obtained for the jointly produced products that is we equate mr to mc now mr is equal to 750 minus 0.05 q and the total cost is given and its marginal cost is obtained by differentiating it with respect to q and we get the marginal cost which is equal to 50 plus 0.02 q. So uh, solving for q, we get q equal to 10,000 units. So at the activity level, q equal to 10,000 units. Marginal revenue for each products are positive. How do we know that? We simply substitute this quantity q equal to 10,000 into marginal revenue of a product a and marginal revenue of product b. जब हम इनमें सब्सटीट्यूट करेंगे Q इक्वल टू टेन थाउजेंड बी सी दैट मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ A इज इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड डॉलर एंड मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ प्रोडक्ट B इज इक्वल टू फिफ्टी डॉलर एट टेन थाउजेंड यूनिट्स ईच प्रोडक्ट मेक्स अ पॉजिटिव कंट्रीब्यूशन दिस मीन्स दैट ईच प्रोडक्ट इज मेकिंग अ पॉजिटिव कंट्रीब्यूशन टूवर्ड्स कवरिंग द मार्जिन कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन where mc is equal to 50 plus 0.02q and now substituting 
this level of output that is q equal to 10,000 into our marginal cost function, we get that the marginal cost is equal to $250. So, uh, we have already seen that marginal revenue of product A is $200 and marginal revenue of product B is $50. So, the total marginal revenue or MRT is equal to $250 and this is equal to the marginal cost that we have obtained which is also equal to $250. In order to find uh, the prices, that is, we have now determined that the optimal level of output is 10,000 uh, units of each product, 10,000 units of quantity jo hai, wo 10,000 hai. Or is quantity pe humne dekha ki dono jo products hai, unka jo marginal revenue hai, that is positive. So, it is a profit maximizing level for the firm. And at this profit maximizing level of firm, the prices of the, uh, the two products, that is product A and B, that can be obtained by substituting this uh, quantity that is 10,000 into their respective demand functions. And these demand functions are given as for product A, it is PA is equal to 400 minus 0 0.01 QA. Substituting 10,000 into this equation, we get that the price of uh, product A is equal to $300 per unit. Whereas, to find the price of the product B, that is the packaging material, we substitute Q equal to 10,000 into PB, which, uh, and we find here that the price of product B is $200. So, ultimately here we have seen that we can calculate the maximum profit, that is the profit which, is, which the firm maximizes at this level of output with these prices that we have obtained here. That is the level of output uh, or the activity level of output is Q is equal to 10,000 for each product and the corresponding, their corresponding prices are $300 for product A and $200 for product B. Uh, since we know the prices and the quantities, we can find the total revenue again and uh, uh, numerically we isko calculate the total revenue calculate and we the total cost jo hai wo subtract karenge, and we will be able to find the profit which is the maximum profit the firm can make with the, for this jointly produced products with fixed proportion. So, here we can see that this profit is calculated as total revenue minus total cost and this turns out to be equal to $1.5 million. This means that the paper company should produce 10,000 units of output and sell the resulting 10,000 units of product A at a price of $300 per ton and uh, 10,000 units of product B at a price of $200 per ton. Here we have said that the marginal revenue of both products is positive, which we have seen before and we calculated that the marginal product of uh, product A was $200 and the marginal product of uh, the other product that is product B was $50. Now, assuming that there is uh, a period which is a recessionary period so that the demand for product B falls uh, drastically. Waha pe humne dekha ki dono jo uh, products thi unka marginal revenue jo tha wo positive tha aur iske saath uh, jo there was uh, this means that there was no excess product of uh, A or either A or B. Dono ki jo products thi uh, jo bhi wo produce kiya ja raha tha 10,000 units it was uh, offered for sale in the market. Uh, but now we are going to consider a case where there is an excess product that uh, and now we are assuming that due to a recession, the demand for product B that is packaging material drastically falls as a result its price function or demand function changes and now the new demand function for product B is 290 minus 0 0.02 QB and the new marginal revenue of product B is calculated as 290s minus 0 0.04 QB. So, at this level of output, that is Q is equal to 8000, the ma total marginal revenue is ma MRA plus MRB, that is 240 plus minus 30. Because MR, jo marginal revenue product B, ka hai, that is minus 30. So, 240, when uh, we uh, plus karenge, minus 30, mein, the result is 2. Uh, 40 minus 30, that is $210. So, the total marginal revenue of these two products, jointly produced products is 
तो इसको जो है अब हम नेक्स्ट स्टेप में देखना है हमें क्योंकि हमने ये कहा है कि मार्जिन रेवेन्यू प्रोडक्ट जो मार्जिन रेवेन्यू प्रोडक्ट बी का है दैट इज नेगेटिव इन ऑर्डर टू सी वट विल बी द लेवल ऑफ आउटपुट वेयर द मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ दिस प्रोडक्ट इज इक्वल टू जीरो वी इक्वेट मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ प्रोडक्ट बी टू मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ प्रोडक्ट सी मार्जिन कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट सी वेयर मार्जिन कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो तो इस लेवल को फाइंड आउट करने के लिए हम इक्वेट करते हैं जो रेवेन्यू है इसका जीरो है तो वहाँ पे हम देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पर कि एट दिस लेवल द क्वांटिटी प्रोड्यूस्ड ऑफ प्रोडक्ट बी इज ओनली सेवन थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टी यूनिट वेयर एज वेन वी इक्वेट एम आर ए टू एम सी नाउ वी आर इक्वेटिंग नॉट टोटल रेवेन्यू टू एम सी वाई बिकॉज वी आर सेंग दैट मार्जिन रेवेन्यू ऑफ प्रोडक्ट बी इज जीरो सो दैट एम आर ए प्लस एम आर बी इज इक्वल टू एम सी तो एम आर ए विल वी हैव टू इक्वेट एक्चुअली एम आर ए टू Uh, MC because now the total marginal revenue uh, curve coincides with marginal revenue uh, curve, uh, marginal revenue curve of product A. So, हम यहाँ पे जब इसको equate करेंगे, then we find that when we equate these two curves, that is MR A to MC, the quantity produced of product A should be 8,750 units. अब इस 8,750 units पे यहाँ पे हमने determine किया है कि जो product A है, उसको 8,750 units uh, produce करेगी firm जबकि uh, product B जो है क्योंकि उसका uh, uh, जो marginal revenue था वो negative था 8,000 पे इसलिए uh, जब हमने uh, uh, point यहाँ पे हमने determine किया है जहाँ पे marginal revenue इस product का zero था और वो level था that was the level of Q at which we have seen that the number of units produced of product B is only 7,250 units. और ऑप्टिमल प्राइसेस जो हैं वो हम यहाँ पे जब सब्सिट्यूट करेंगे रेलेवेंट फंक्शंस में तो ऑप्टिमल प्राइस जो है प्रोडक्ट ए की थ्री ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव जीरो डॉलर है और जो प्रोडक्ट बी है उसकी वन फोर्टी फाइव डॉलर है और जो मैक्सिमम जो प्रॉफिट है वो पहले के नस्बत जाहिर है कि कम होगा एंड दैट इज फाइव एटी तो यहाँ से आप देख सकते हैं इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोड्यूस जॉइंटली प्रोड्यूस प्रोडक्ट विद अ फिक्स प्रपोर्शन when there is no excess product and when there is an excess product so isme jo excess jo 8000 humne kaha hai ki units se zyada jo product b ke jitne bhi units produce honge kyunki jointly produce kar rahe hain to wo firm jo hai market mein sale ke liye nahi layegi kyunki unka jo marginal revenue hai that is negative so it will be either this excessive Uh, product uh, uh, this excessive units so these excessive units of product b are either they are destroyed or they are simply uh, the um, the firm will simply held them back aur unko wo sale ke liye offer nahi karegi iske sath hi hum aaj ka lecture jo hai wo khatam karte hain thank you and khuda hafiz